Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick overview on how I process photos of the lunar surface in AutoStackard and Registax. And I won't get into the capture process of uh, moon photographs and planetary photographs uh, using fire capture. I might do that in a different video, but this is just going to be the process of using AutoStackard and Registax. So I have uh, an SER file. I also have uh, an AVI file, but we're going to use the SER file. And we'll just drag it over here to AutoStacker. And see on my other monitor, I'll drag it over here so you can see it. There is our moon. And we come down here, we have... Um, Choices here of surface or planet. Since this is the moon, we'll we'll check surface, and I'm going to leave it as expand. I haven't messed with this selection here, cropped, and I don't use improved tracking uh, because I'm I'm doing this on an equatorial mount, and everything was pretty stable, so I don't think I need need that. Um, this stuff down here, we can ignore this for now, and then we'll just hit hit analyze and let auto stacker do its thing and right now it's kind of got a yellow greenish tint it is uh, debayered but not balanced the color channels aren't balanced so that's why it's a little uh, funny looking right now but we see here that auto stacker has analyzed the SER file and it's kind of ranked the individual frames. Um, so then we have a, a choice of where we want to uh, set our threshold as far as um, the quality of the frames that we want to use in our stack. So we can go up here the upper left of this uh, bigger um, kind of a box and we have this slider here that says frames and we can when we slide it, you'll see over here on this other window, this green line moves to the right and we can set it, we're going to set it right around there, right around the 50% threshold. And let's see, this was a, a two minute, um, a two minute SER file. So that gets us about 135 frames. And I can't remember the frame rate that I was shooting at. I was using a region of interest on a APS-C size camera, so it wasn't shooting the fastest. It was just probably a couple of frames per second. So I think I ended up with 250, 275 total frames in this uh, SER file, which isn't a ton for planetary, but for lunar, I don't know if you need quite as many but I guess we'll find out. So we set our uh, threshold 135 frames and then we're going to place our um, alignment points over here. We're just going to hit that place AP grid and it's going to do it automatically and look at all these points that AutoStacker has picked out. It's just a web of uh, alignment points so I just let AutoStacker take care of that on its own. When I've done planetary, I've selected them manually, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this works. Uh, let's see, we'll export as TIFF. We won't sharpen because we're going to do the wavelet sharpening in Registax. Uh, I'll just leave these checked RGB aligned, saving folders. And hmm, let's, let's try a drizzle and see what kind of resolution we get and that'll just be kind of fun to be able to um, zoom in on the lunar surface later on so we'll just do 1.5 hopefully the file doesn't become huge with that so then we hit stack and let auto stacker do its thing Okay, so Auto Stacker just wrapped up the stacking process and using the 1.5 times drizzle, it took over half an hour 
to process this file uh, when I've done uh, previous stacks of similar size without drizzle it took maybe two minutes so <laughs> that 1.5 times drizzle added on a ton of time um, I can only imagine what the three times would be and the file size came out to uh, somewhere around 95 megabytes as opposed to uh, 45 megabytes without drizzle so we'll open Registax here and we'll do a little bit more work with this and I always just hit yes with stretch intensity levels Okay, there is our stacked file, and it doesn't look too much different from uh, what we saw earlier in AutoStacker. But let's go ahead and let's do this RGB balance over here on the right, and I just do auto balance, and that uh, aligns our color channels so we get a more accurate. Uh, depiction of what the moon should look like so it's just doing this square right here in the middle and I think that's because it's just kind of like a preview right now I don't know if we can enlarge that I tried messing with it in the past and uh, I just was kind of fumbling around <laughs> with the software so we'll just leave it at that and then um, I like to use this zoomed in panel that kind of gives you this thumbnail of a zoomed in portion of your image, but for some reason um, it's not working that well for me. It's taken like a long time to update the zoomed in thumbnail. When I've done it with really small files for planetary before, it was almost instant, but I don't know if this file is just too large or what, but um, so we'll just leave it there and see what it does. Now the the real reason why we go into Registax is to use the wavelet uh, sharpening panel over here on the left side, and we basically have six sliders here, and I'm no expert on exactly what these do on an individual basis, but as a whole, these are basically going to sharpen up your image and really bring out a ton of detail. You don't want to overdo it, obviously, if your image gets too sharp, too crunchy, it looks unnatural, and you you could possibly get some halos. Um, if that's really what you want, you know, you really want a sharp image, then go for it. But um, I kind of stick somewhere eh, a little bit past the middle. I mean, I like a sharp image, too, so... I'll just start with this top one. This one we usually bring out the furthest. So I don't know if you could see that right there, but that really brought out a lot of detail. And I think maybe because this was drizzled, I might be able to sharpen a bit more. So, and then if you click on the little preview button here on the wavelet panel and it'll highlight in red and green red equals decreasing green equals increasing so the green portions are where the effect is really being applied to uh, we'll go down to the second slider and we we'll kind of go somewhere in the middle with that or maybe kind of two-thirds of the way and let's uncheck the box see if we notice yep we see definitely see a difference there and let's go with number three somewhere around halfway it's looking pretty good maybe four a third of the way I don't know if you guys can hear my cats going crazy in the background sorry about that <laughs> So this is um, a preview of what our final sharpened image will look like. 
and then you know obviously you just play with these sliders um, as much as you want until you get it to where you want it to be so you might just mess around with it a little bit more like I said I don't want to go too far but I definitely want to squeeze out a lot of detail and let's, let's just see what happens so now I raised uh, slider six almost as high as slider one and it kind of started getting a little a little too sharp in there so I'll drop it back down to maybe a quarter and let's go let's go around 30 on both five and six let's bring four up to um, maybe 40. Okay, I think that's that's uh, pretty much all we're gonna do. I mean, there's a there's other tools in here you can mess with the gamma, uh, RGB align. I've never really gotten anything out of that. Um, RGB balance makes a noticeable effect, but I'm not exactly sure what align is um, intended to do. Then we have some uh, denoise tools, and we can also work with uh, noise. Uh, on each of these individual channels and sharpening here too, which I'm not exactly sure the technical technical difference between um, you know using these sliders, these wavelet sliders to bring out detail, and then the sharpening uh, tools for each of these sliders as well. I've never really messed with them. So um, then after all this, we would uh, click on this do all button up here and then the image and then save image. And then I would typically bring it into Lightroom and then maybe Photoshop just to add in some more contrast and maybe just like a touch of sharpening. Um, but let's let's hit do all and see what the uh, final result is. See how long it takes with this larger file as well. Okay, there is our processed image, and that made a huge difference. And I don't think it went too far um, with the sharpening. So I can kind of see a little bit of a chromatic aberration, it looks like. A little kind of magenta fringing over here, but it's, I mean, you have to be super zoomed in to notice it. And I can fix that in Photoshop or Lightroom pretty e easily. Uh, Another thing, I'm not <laughs> sure how to get a kind of zoomed out view of uh, my file here in order to see the entire uh, movie itself. Oh, show full image. There we go. Nice. So, yeah, that is, that's looking pretty good. So, we will save. Add that on there, save it as a TIFF. And then I would just import it into Lightroom and send it over to Photoshop and do whatever else. I think um, as far as maybe adding some contrast for those planet saturation or, or you know, maybe desaturation or just correcting the color balance and maybe just a slight amount of sharpening. I could see some of this magenta fringing down here. I'll probably work on but yep that's that's about it pretty simple to use auto stackered and registax for planetary and lunar and i think solar imaging as well um yeah compared to deep sky imaging doing planets and, and lunars it's different but it's it's a lot easier i think so hopefully this uh helped some of you guys out and uh 
feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.